Okay. Hello, everybody. Uh, okay. <laughs> We're a little bit late. We had a long series of um, tech failures that <laughs> resulted in me being late. Um, so because this is still a very new format, I'm kind of getting the bearings because this is unlike video games where you only have to make sure two programs work. I have like 100 programs in the background I'm trying to get working. So um, it's a bit complicated. All right, so today we are going to continue on the line of doing things a little bit um, differently because uh, we're still really learning with this new format. Um, so let me know if you can't hear me. Let me know if um, there, the music's too loud. I still think there's music. I think it's the same music as last time. I meant to change it up every time. Uh, but with everything else that went wrong, I just forgot. Um, so hello, everybody. So today what we're doing, we're doing um, something a little bit different than last time, which is we just talked about the Canticle of Exaltations. That lecture was more about um, something like just on the lore, and there was not a lot of theory. Well, not a lot of theory. Like, it was mostly theory, but like... It was not one particular person's. This one is, I dug through some of my Twitter DMs and like I went to like the oldest DMs I could find and started clearing things out. And um, <clears throat> you sound fine, don't hear music. Okay. If it's not there, then we're just gonna have a silent stream. I can't be fucked to deal with background music. <laughs> um, it, it says that something's playing, but like I don't. I don't know. I hear faint music. Okay. Well, if it's there, it's there. If it's not, that's well, okay. Anyway, but I went through all the Twitter DMs and I picked out, um, I think there's three of them. Yeah, three specific DMs that I thought were really interesting for various reasons. The last one is probably the one we're going to spend most of our time on. And then the other two, one I thought was kind of thought provoking and one I think is just an interesting tidbit. So, um,. Here we go. Uh, there. Okay. Also, um, I when I originally made this, this is actually like a two week old presentation I made. Um, I had planned on using the poll function from Streamlabs, and kind of because like recently there's been a whole thing on like Streamlabs kind of like being jerks, and I kind of want to figure that out more before I use their products. Um, I am not going to be using the poll section, so these slides are wrong. They're wrong. They're wrong. They're wrong. They're wrong. All the chat, 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 chat. So I guess, 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 not quite right. There is not going to be a fun poll feature, but we can. I'll just start reading the chats during those times. Anyway, let's get. Oh, how old are these DMs? Uh, like uh, most of these are from 2018. I think one's from 2017, like late 2017. So uh, they're older than my child. So that's that's something. Anyway, let's get on with this. So, the very first DM that I got is from Alyssa Nolman, and uh, they say, Hi there, I just have to say your videos are amazing, thank you. I do have a random thought that's been on my mind lately. Is it possible that Abelas knew who Solus was, and that his comment, Elven, such as you, and the conversation surrounding it is more a veiled attempt at telling Abelas that there are still ancient elves and not actually Solus co coaxing him to help the Dalish last city elves like it seems on the surface? I'm not sure there's much evidence to back it up, given how little we know about Abelas, but I thought it was interesting. Uh, I, I will admit that I did mean to pull this video, but at the moment, uh, so many tech things went wrong that it just didn't happen. <laughs> so uh, let's go to the next slide, and I'll just explain the slide, or explain the, the scene if you don't remember it. Um, oh, no, Echo? Your stream was skipping. Okay, I don't know what that means. Has it stopped? Please use a keyframe frequency of four seconds or less. Current keyframes are not being... Okay, YouTube, what's this mean? <clears throat> Still skipping. I'll type it in the chat. It stopped? Okay. Let me see, because I have no idea what... It's fine now. Okay. Please, is a keyframe frequency or 
Four seconds or less. The current keyframe is eight. How do I change the keyframes? Why? Like, I'm using the exact same settings as I was using last time. What's going on? Uh, okay. Hold on. Let's... <clears throat> It's funny because it happened when we were talking crap about Streamlabs. Oh, great. Okay. Um, YouTube, yeah, YouTube's yelling at me that I have some setting that's really high, but, like, I have no idea what the setting is. I don't think it's talking about the bitrate, because the bitrate is, like, relatively low. Like, and, and I haven't changed it. Looking at OBS. Is it something on YouTube? You're fine, don't worry about it. Well, I, YouTube's yelling at me, though, that something's wrong. And that the stream status is poor, and I have no idea what keyframes are. Okay, we're just we're just gonna continue on, and if it happens again, uh, just the good lord decided I shouldn't stream today. Apparently, <laughs> the tech errors are out of control. Okay, anyway, moving on. So the scene that we're talking about is uh, right after what Pride had wrought, um, and if you have brought Solus along to the quest, um, well, okay, there's a couple different variables for this to happen you need to have brought solace to what pride is wrought and you also need to keep obelos alive um there's various ways to do that oh and you and you need to like side with obelos which uh i think you only keep obelos alive if you side with him so yeah of course anyway but um there is an exchange between them and um Solus says to obelos i think it's almost verbatim here uh your people yet your people need you we yet linger or something like that and then Abla says to Solas, people such as you, or Elven such as you, Solas says yes, such as I. <clears throat> so, I had not even considered that this wasn't talking about more ancient elves. <laughs> um, so I just, I, I guess, like, I, I thought her question was interesting because I just hadn't considered that it wasn't about the ancient elves and that there's more ancient elves out into the world. Could and I, I do think that Albulus knows that Solus is Fenhrel, or at least an ancient elf, because he says Solus's magic is familiar, or at least the mark that is Solus's magic. He calls it familiar. And, like, I guess this also leads into the question of Solus is infamous in history, but how much of his face was known? Like, with this picture here, where it's all covered, could Abolas actually know that he was Fenhrel just by sight alone? I don't really know. Um, so... Are people yet linger? Surely there are other elven survivors as there was in the temple. I'm sure Solus had somebody on his side that was able to survive the falling of the veil. Where they are, I have no idea. But I I just always assume that there was like a pocket of ancient elves that are like Solus's trusted generals or something. Like I just assumed that. I know in more recent years we have found out that Solus has been recruiting other elves from like the Dalish and the um, Elvenon or not Elvenon, but uh, the city elves to like do his bidding. But I just assume that there was a, a pocket of ancient. But what, what do you, what do you guys think about this? And that's that's the next slide. Are there other ancient elves in Thetis minus Solus and those of the Temple of Mithal? What do you guys think? <clears throat> yes, uh, Abelos also means uh, sorrow. <clears throat> I just love frolicking in the woods. I already knew that about Solus before playing Inquisition, so I just assumed it was about ancient elves. Yeah. <clears throat> Could the elven mask be why he wasn't recognized? The mask had a reference always in lore. I mean, was was he not recognized, though? That's what I'm assuming. He might have been recognized. Oh, the chat feature doesn't work. You don't have to do the vote yet. Can I actually change that here? I think I can. Uh, just delete it. The, I, I'm not using the Streamlabs chat, so it doesn't work. <laughs> we got a lot of yeses. There's one no. What would be the reason for them to stay in hiding, though? That's, that's a good question, Kira. So, I don't actually know. My assumption has always been because Solo says that the Veil took everything from the elves, including themselves, and their immortality. If they wanted to stay alive, they had to go into euthanera. So I just assumed that, because that's what the t people at Temple of Mithal were doing. They would go into sleeping until someone came close to their, their area. They would wake up, shoot them, and then go back to sleep. And that's how they survived that long. <clears throat> 
may not have to have recognized his face. That's true. It could have been like maybe he recognized the voice or even just the magic, which is what he says. I think Solus knows there are ancient elves around, but not exactly where they are. Mm -hmm. If there was Felison, but there were more doing other stuff for him. Yeah, Felison. Felison. I've always assumed Felison was ancient just because like there was that dialogue between him and... Um, Briala. If you don't know who Felisan is, he is an elven character and masked empire novel. <clears throat> Are there other hidden temples, Helen says. Uh, Helen, I don't know. We assume so. Because there's at least one. And if, the, if one has survived, surely there's another. At least in the, the, the very least in the temple, or not the temple, the, uh, the, the forest of Arlathan, which is very unexplored and used to belong to the elves. <clears throat> I think so, yes, given we have Felison and there has to be someone around to preserve his body in Ethan Air or something, says Blue Badger. That's true. We don't know, like, how Solus's body survived. That could have been magic. Because, like, in some of the, the uh, Codex entries, there was dialogue about how slaves, essentially, or servants, would help preserve the body by feeding it some honey. And then there's those that if they were really, really good at the Fade or whatever, they would um, be able to sustain themselves on the Fade, which I guess Solus could do. But it, like, if that's a legend or at least someone to protect the body. I don't know. I'm surprised they have the power to enter Euthanaris, his Hyper Green 05. Or Hype Green 05. I mean, that's what they talk about, but I... There's there's so much we don't know, and we're just kind of assuming that maybe they don't. Yeah, Murray, if Solus had reached perfection, he wouldn't need an attendant. Which, like, I kind of always assumed if anyone had reached that, it would be Solus. <laughs> <clears throat> Yeah, I think maybe the ancient elves were busy maintaining the temples or structures that still worked and were sacred, says RRC. Yeah. Okay, so I think for the most part, people are saying that uh, th th there are probably ancient elves and that, yeah, Solas was telling Avalas that there are other ancient elves. They're just maybe few and far between and hidden away. That, that's kind of what I've always assumed and I've seen online, but like, yeah, I guess I just don't really hear of other people saying the, the opposite, which I thought the question was interesting. All right, so moving on to the next DM I got. This one is a little less lore heavy and just kind of an interesting language question. And I just find the different dubs of um, Dragon Age so fascinating. So from Ordinary Elf, hello, Gildathon. I found your YouTube channel a few days ago. Uh, very nice compliments. Uh, now, this message may be weird because I posted the following question on your comments to your Solus video, which I did not see at the time, but I looked it up and I did find it again, and it basically says the same thing. So, okay, so regarding Cole's remark, which is believed to refer to Felisan, that was officially conf was that sorry, regarding Cole's remark, which is believed to refer to Felisan, was that officially confirmed? Because in German, friend was translated to Freuden. I'm probably mispronouncing this terribly i'm so sorry which translates to female friend and if i were a translator i wouldn't just translate it to that if nothing indicates it if that friend is male or female especially if that distinction exists in my language and could easily change the meaning so i assume the translator did ask and then answer sorry and the answer led to him translating it like he did which would believe that which would mean that Cole is not talking about Felisan. I believe it's about the person who betrayed Solus, the person he mentions in that conversation after the Inquisitor drank from the Well of Sorrows, if I remember correctly, but it could possibly be that I am mistaking things here. It may sound silly, but that's what come to mind when I heard the remark and remembered that difference, because I did another Trespasser playthrough recently, which uh, this, this message is from like 2018, so that was like a long time ago, but um, I hope I am not bothering you, you're not bothering me, I'm the butthole that just got to your message. So I actually looked this up, um, and up at the top here is what I got from the game myself, because uh, I have all of the translations of Inquisition. Um, and I asked Michael, who has like a high school level of German, and he confirmed this for me. But uh, sign, sign of Freuden, Freud, Freuden, I don't, again, I don't know how to speak German, does literally mean a female friend. Um, so, yeah, for some reason, the German translation 
of uh, which uh, the English translation is down below. His friend had to die because he thought they were people. A slow arrow breaks in the sad wolf's jaws. For some reason, the German translation makes his friend a, a very specifically a female friend. Um, I just find this fascinating. <laughs> um, and I don't know why this is. So I can't say 100% that it is confirmed to uh, be Felislan. Because I, I, I feel like I haven't seen anyone to say, hey, this is about Felison and is this about Felison and Weeks saying yes, it is. But I feel like it's been talked around and like, I don't know. No one's, I guess, technically asked the question, is this definitely about Felison? And Weeks goes, yes, it definitely is. But I just assume like the, the way the conversation is around it and like it's been referenced, it is about Felison. So I almost want to say it's just a translation error. So the, the slow arrow bit right after it is a direct translation of Felisan's name. And if it's not him, this is a really obtuse clue buried in a lot of obvious ones. So I, I, I just can't imagine it's not Felisan. So my only guess here is that perhaps the translator confused Solus's friend from the personal quest, which is a female, or at least looks like a female, to be Felisan. That's my only assumption. So, <clears throat> any other Romance languages comment? Yeah, I okay, so I meant to go get the French version, but as I was doing it, I realized I have no idea how to speak French, and no one I know speaks French, so I had no idea when I was triggering the line. <laughs> so, if you speak French and can help with this, that would be greatly appreciated. Um, but, yeah... So Arrow has to be a fellow son reference. That, see, that's what I'm saying. I'm really, really thinking it's it's French. Or not French. It's, it is fellow son. <clears throat> what about other languages? So I don't have the other um, captioned languages. So there, there's only three different voice-lined um, languages. German, French, and uh, English, obviously, for Inquisition. There are a lot of other um, captioned languages, though, and I, do, I didn't bother with those. So if I speak some French, uh, to, I will say to trigger this, the best way to trigger the line is if you like just go into Trespasser for the very first time um, and start talking to Cole. Because it's something that Cole says in the, um, the uh, like just the Trespasser it, it, like tavern. <clears throat> so Dandelion says... Freuden does mean female friend, but after it says, it still says he had to die, guessing it's translation error. <clears throat> I get, yeah, okay. I know enough French to tell my love female. <laughs> <clears throat> yeah, so I, if, if someone wants to, like, double check what the French thing says, that would be great, because I had no idea what I was looking at. To be honest, <laughs> I tried and I'm like, okay, I can't, I'm not, I don't know anything about French. So I, my, my assumption here is a hundred percent that it's a translation. I'm going to just go back to the, the, this thing right here. <clears throat> you just find the game files though. I need to go rummaging through the game. The, the problem is the game files are a confusing maze as like on its own. Can I, okay, here's the thing. Could I go into the game files Try to find it, and would I be a easily able to see the other languages if I have them already installed? Okay, hold on. We're gonna we're gonna sit here while I fuck around with this. <clears throat> Sorry, I want to see if I can do this real quick. So let me pull up. Uh, I don't need the mod maker. I need. Yes, thank you. Yes, thank you. And now we have to wait like ten minutes for it to load up all the files. It says Freuden and then C, which is she. <clears throat> so is it she had to die? <clears throat> I I see. Here's I I find this a fascinating question, but I don't know shit about languages. I am so bad with languages. Yes, as RC that I'd be able to find it. Okay, so let's let's spend just a few moments here while I'm looking at this. Cause like the I can't imagine this is anything other than a translation issue. But like on 
look, it's been seven years without a game, and I'm not going to turn down a lead for some weirdness going on, you know what I mean? <laughs> I've taken weirder turns and actually found shit, so you know what? We're just, we're just going to go. Okay. It's still loading up the game data. Ah, uh, never mind. C is for they. Am I even saying that right? Sorry, I didn't look at the whole sentence. Uh, that's fine. I didn't uh, probably have it up for long. The Russian translation says masculine friend, and the pronoun is they for elves. They for elves. Because they thought they were people. Okay, okay. So Russian. Okay, so Russian at least is masculine. The German translated into English, it says his friend female had to die because he thought they were people. Okay. <clears throat> Thank you for talking about this. I want to play in German was so confused. She had to die because he thought they were people? At first I thought it meant Mithal, but this <laughs> made no sense. Okay. Man, I really need a trailer, Bioware. Katie's going great. Oh, believe me. Um, while we're waiting this stupid thing to load so I can look up the French at least. Uh, what do you guys think for, uh, Game Awards? Are we gonna see the Hobbit Dragon Age or not? Maybe the translator didn't know whether it was supposed to be male or female, so we used both genders in the same sentence to, to definitely be right and definitely be wrong. Is that a thing that, like, I, I don't speak German, obviously, um, but, like, would that make sense to do in the language? <clears throat> oh, so I should I should say 100% certain that Cole says Freuden. He does. I did uh, listen to, c because I knew what I was looking for, because thankfully Michael <laughs> speaks a little bit of German. Um, I just, I, I, I was playing the lines for him when I was playing the game, and he, he was able to confirm that's what that Cole says as well. So it, it's not only is it typed out, it Cole says it. Oh, boy. I think we're finally... If you're wondering uh, uh, how long it takes to get into the game files, I'm, st I'm still waiting for it to load. I hope there will be a trailer. I need one. Okay, here's the thing with the trailer. I, I want there to be a trailer, and I also don't want there to be a trailer, because there is four hours of the game awards, and I can't fucking watch four hours, boy. <laughs> Google Translate is translating Sign of Freuden as his girlfriend. Yeah, Michael Michael said that it's I think it's literally it means like girlfriend, not necessarily like a girlfriend, like someone you date. But Oh god. There's another loading bar. I forgot how long this takes. No, but there's no gender neutral form for for German. Okay. <clears throat> French is masculine and Spanish too. Okay, thank you, Jorge. Because this this is taking so long just to load the game files. So, okay, we have confirmation that um, French and Spanish is masculine. We know English is... English is... Eng okay, English is being vague, but I'm going to assume it means masculine. The German is feminine. The Russian is masculine. So, God, what, what languages are even left? <laughs> okay, so I, I would say I, I can't, I, I'm, this thing is still loading for the game files. So we will, we will just move on. But um, I'm, I'm going to say case solved, it's translation issue. German, for some reason, just wants to make Felison with female pronouns. <laughs> so, okay, yeah. Um, if, I, I guess like, that kind of sucks for the German players who have read Mast Empire. Is Mast Empire even translated into German? That'd be interesting to find out. Anyway, but um, I'm sorry, German players. You got a really bad mistranslation of a fun line. Uh, anyway, moving on to what I kind of want to spend most of our time on is a question from A Audhana. I'm very sorry for, for doing this. Oh, is there Japanese subtitles in the game? I forgot about that. Yeah, I, Murray, you're the only Dragon Age fan that I know that speaks Japanese. So if that's something you really want to figure out, I think that's going to be on. Yeah, I can help with the Japanese. <laughs> I, I don't know of anyone else in this fandom that speaks Japanese. 
but um, yeah, I, I'm just going to assume that it's just a weird translation issue with German. Anyway, so this PM says, Hey, Katie, so I have had a very dumb but kind of fun theory forming in my head. The theory slash basically canon now that Liliana was sung to life by Lyrium, perhaps with some manifestation of her former self's memories, and the theory that she was touched by Andraste sort of joined together in my mind. So Andraste is mentioned as having a half-sister who was the child of a proficient alchemist who died in an incident involving Andraste. This incident left Andraste with severely damaged lungs and... Excuse me, I had a hiccup. This incident left Andraste with severely damaged lungs and the ability to enter trances where she would hear memories and could hear the sound of bells. I will say I don't remember where hear memories was ever said in like the lore or something. So I think maybe this might be a weird paraphrase. I, I really tried to find something about hearing memories, but I couldn't necessarily find it. it doesn't mean it doesn't exist. I just couldn't find it. Anyway. Uh, but the sound of bells is definitely a thing that happened. Anyway, this sounds like the song of Lyrium and its memory recording powers to me. The Chantry even claims that she managed to contact the Maker by singing to him, and this took place after the accident with her sister. The Imperial Chantry also believes she was a mage. The theory forming in my head is that maybe the Andraste that conquered the Imperium and was executed in Manrathus wasn't Andraste at all, but the memory of a young Alamar woman who died in a heretical, heretical alchemical incident alongside her sister which is sung into life by Lyrium just like Liliana <clears throat> so um, I'm not going to lecture a lot about Andraste if you're confused just go watch the Andraste video but um, real quick let's let's talk about everything we know about um, Lyrium Lyrium Liliana uh, everything we know about Lyrium Liliana is on the screen right now which is eventually Liliana became distant and compl complative I'd, I'm not going to talk well today. Anyway, often secluding herself in the rookery with none but her ravens for company. One morning, the residents of Skyhold awoke to a great beating of wings and a vast cloud of ravens blotting out the sky above the fortress. Those who investigated found both the rookery and Liliana's chambers vacant with only a single message left as explanation. The lyrium sank thought into being. Now time is stale and the melody is called elsewhere. Until I am needed, I am free. So... Is Andraste a Lyrium Andraste? Um, first, let's talk about Lyrium Liliana. If you don't know anything about Lyrium Liliana, Lyrium Liliana is Bioware's answer to what happened if you killed Liliana in Origins and they really wanted her to come back in Inquisition. <laughs> it Basically, their explanation that was hinted at here, and again, all we really have on it is... is, is these lines right here. This is the only thing we actually have on it. Everything else we have just assumed. We have assumed that um, because how to kill Liliana is if you go to the Templar Sacred Ashes, you defile the ashes. Liliana gets pissed at you, tries to kill you, you kill her. Um, so the assumption, because even back in Origins, the uh, the temple was filled with lyrium, and then like, kind of an inquisition, there was like a couple lines of like, why is there a lot of lyrium here, and there was something with Mithal, like there's something going on with the Temple of uh, Sacred Ashes, that um, when she died, the lyrium under the temple sung her back to life somehow, and that she's not quite Liliana, she's like a being of something that the Lyrium made or a, or a Titan made or the Maker made. We're, we're not really quite sure. Um, but uh, after the events of the Inquisition, if you killed the Liana in Origins, she kind of puffs away in a... <laughs> she, she puffs away in a, a, a cloud of uh, ravens and disappears, leaving that note behind. Which I really hope that in the next game, if we get to talk to like Charter or Harding, or any of the spies, and Liliana was a Lyrium construct, that you can just say, like, hey, what was that whole thing about? And they'll just be like, girl, I have no fucking idea. Because <laughs> I just want to ask. Anyway. So, could Andraste be a Lyrium Andraste? So, the, 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 the PM did talk about, like, different miracles, and, like, one of the miracles was landslides, and, like, Titan magic could totally explain landslides, but there are 
other things that like you couldn't say like oh it was obviously titan magic because it wasn't really like earthquakes like it was there's some of them were like plagues i guess you could say like maybe a titan can cause all the nutrients of the earth to cause um you know the wheat not to grow but then like there was other things like uh they, they keep like a like a, a sickness going about like a, some sort of plague it could have been the blight i don't know the, not all the miracles you can read about in, in like the uh, the andraste myth really makes sense with titan magic but i guess like if you like the, dragon age is all about finding out that all your history you've known is wrong so all you can do is a hand wavy oh well that didn't actually happen and it could i guess it could work but like it's it's not like a hundred percent this has to be it but so andraste's mission against magical leaders does kind of make sense if you think about the titans so what we know about the titans is that there was some war against the titans and the evanuris i think the evanuris won um but if if andraste was a being created by the titans her mission against magical leaders kind of makes sense if like maybe maybe a titan awoke or something because we, we know that has happened before with Paragon Garal, and I don't I don't remember if Valta ever said if there was some sort of, like, date for that. Maybe it was. But, like, maybe the Titan awoke, made Andraste, and said, Hey, I'm really not liking these Magisters. I'm going to send someone to go out and beat them up <laughs> and that's what andraste was like it kind of makes sense in a weird way because they're like oh this is what the evanuris was and we can't do that again so we're just gonna go beat them down i don't know i that kind of makes sense to me and i have to say this is one of the more plausible andraste theories that i've heard like they, it's, it's open enough to work in my mind so i guess i just want to see what you guys think about it <clears throat> and all the dogs are barking Maybe if Andraste and her sister died over a hidden wellspring of Lyrium. That's also true. I think it was like 500 years previously. Oh, is there a line about that? Let's see, 500 years from... That that wouldn't have been the time of Andraste, because every age is 100 years. So that would have been in like the... Like the mid-age. Okay. <clears throat> Ellen says, but how does she answer ever anything about the hero if she was never recruited? Oh, sorry. Didn't mean oh, that's fine. Um, I, there is dialogue if you never recruited Liliana, but I, I, I think she just doesn't answer questions about the warden. I think she just was there. Marie says, could also be because the magisters were trading for Illyrium and the Titans were pissed about it. Yeah, that's a great answer, too. That could be it. Uh, RC, that's a 2 out of 2. Did I miss a 1 out of 2? RC, honestly, this theory is kind of rad, but I'm not feeling it. I feel like the Lyrium thing with Liliana is because of Dev's trying to get out of a plot hole. Oh, no, I missed the other one. Okay, there's the 1 out of 2. Okay. Bro, why I'm 100% on the Andraste was a mage theory, even if she isn't there, were still thousands of mages in a rebellion. The miracles, if they are ever explained, were caused by them. They probably hit it because it makes political sense not to wage a war against mages with mages, says RC. Okay, like, th this theory aside with this, yeah, that makes... I think in reality, that would be a really good answer. I just don't know if the game devs would go with that, but I, yeah, that's that's a really good exp explanation. <clears throat> <clears throat> Any other thoughts? I always thought she was a dreamer since her and Fanriel's experiences were somehow described in the same kind of terms. I... I mean, yeah, that could work. Uh, also, uh, for those keeping track at home, uh, while I was talking about Andraste, like, maybe, like, two or three minutes ago, uh, the, <laughs> the, the game data finally loaded. <laughs> it takes that long to load up it up. Uh, wasn't Shartan thought to possibly be soulless in some theories? Yes. Um, there is a lot of things in the world of Theta specifically that talks about Shartan and Solus. Or, okay. They say that Shartan could have been based on tales of a trickster warrior that waged wars against leaders, which, like, that's Solus. You know what I mean? No thoughts, head empties. <laughs> it's your rebel. 
Kira says, it feels very convoluted to me since there's already so much surrounding her. I mean, that's fair. Yeah. Lydia Sor says, I feel like Andraste could be anyone or anything. I'm willing to believe any theory about her at this point. I, I think this is... Yeah, there's there's something about Andraste that is just theory bait, and I would honestly be ever surprised if they ever do anything more than just theory bait on her. Like, if they ever a answer any questions in Andraste, I would be shocked. I feel like Andraste is an unknowable. Like, she's she Andraste is at her most interesting in the series, and, and the maker too, by the way. Like, is at this most interesting as a series as a bunch of questions and no answers. I, I don't think we could ever get a question or an, an answer to Andraste or the maker that feels satisfying and would actually be better for the world. That's my personal opinion. However, I will sit here and talk about it endlessly. <laughs> uh, Helen says, turns out the Chantry has been worshipping a Titan the whole time. Well, it, I mean, hey, yeah, in this theory, a Titan is the maker. Um, which kind of works in a weird way when you think about it because like they do shape the earth in some sense and like i i i feel like i i feel like okay if if, if there's only two possibilities where a solace were the maker or a titan was the maker i think the chantry would be more chill with the titan being the maker than the solace <laughs> Mostly because the Chantry just hates elves so much, <laughs> but maybe that's just me. Uh, is Divine Lyrium Liliana a thing, says Deathman. It is actually a thing, and she does not disappear if she's divine. She just stays as Liliana, and you don't even figure out that she's the Lyrium construct, if she actually is at all. It could totally be plausible that Lyrium construct is a weird quantum state where she's only a lyrium construct if you do not make her divine. Um, and like somehow in all possible world state where she's divine, she somehow survives dying. You know, like it's, it's a real, I don't, why, while Liliana really does work in Inquisition, having her come back in such a big way really put a lot more questions than answers in the lore. <clears throat> Yeah, if you get the maker question and answer, you might wind up with the Evaneris and be really disappointed. Uh, says uh, says Badger Pride eighty nine. Uh, yeah, I I think that so many. Okay, I love the Elven things. My channel's all Elven, whatever. Uh, elven lore I think is great. However, so many people are so sick of Elven lore, and they just like because it is the truth that when you go chasing down a lot of these 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 lore rabbit holes or 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 theory theory bait stuff oh, most of the time at the very end is the evanuris and other elven magic very 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 rarely is it a titan or anything dwarven um and it's it's been like that for a while <clears throat> Ofek Ofek says, don't we meet Shartan's ghost in the Temple of Sacred Ashes, though? Seems like he was pretty real. So there's, I think I talked about this in something recently, but I can't remember. I'm at the point where I've done so much content, I don't know what I've said anymore. <laughs> but um, yes, you do meet Shartan's ghost. But it, it, because of the way the world works, there... It, it, <laughs> It wasn't a ghost so much, it, and like this is even said in the temple, it, they're not ghosts of the people. They are spirits masquerading as these people. That doesn't necessarily mean that Shartan was real. It just means that Shartan as a concept was so strong that a spirit was able to take a form of a Shartan. There could also be multiple Shartans, like a Shartan being a title, like Shartan means like a leader or something. So there, So then in that case, it's not really one Shartan. It's just, it's just a bunch of them. And so do we meet the Shartan, the Andrasse? Or was there like Shartan 1 and Shartan 2? You know, there's there's some questions and like with spirits just being the absolute no answer beings that they are. Like it, it, it could be anything goes. <clears throat> so a lot of people are saying... Uh, well, yeah, a lot of people are coming down here uh, defending the Elven lore. 
RSC says, I'm a little sick of Elven Lore, though I do love theories on it. I'm also a bit upset that most of our lake quest slash zones were in the dales or deserts, and we never got to be with the common folk. Yeah, I think that has to do with, like, cities are hard in games. <laughs> that, that's what I would have guessed. <laughs> it's a collection of short hands and short says Reese <laughs> Yes. Oh, God. Laura says, I mean so I mean so much of DAO is retconned. Is it really difficult to take facts from there? <laughs> yes and no. There there's there I, so Dragon Age has an interesting way of retconning when it it doesn't say, "Oh no, this like this says it happened, but it didn't." The retcon is, well, you just don't understand. You just didn't understand how it happened. Like they they keep things vague enough. Like probably the most specifically, oh, we said that happened, but it didn't. Was the ending slide specifically for Cullen on Dragon Age Origins? And even that, the ending slides were talked about as rumors. Where like these are rumors that these happened, and like yeah, those rumors could have existed. Just but Cullen didn't go on a killing spree of of mages. So, of all the series, Dragon Age is a little bit forgivable because they do try not to write themselves into holes. It does kind of happen sometimes. Um, so, it's you can st get stuff from Origins, but it's one of those things where if you... If something is said in Origins and you find something that can, can contradicts it later in the series, you might as well just go with the contradiction as the reality and whatever was in game as not the truth so <clears throat> I have no complaints about Elven Laura bathing at lol says Murray I mean yeah not a whole lot of Yaya was retcon. some of the Yaya lawyers are so vague that it can be twisted around like Flemeth's grimoire things with RC. yeah exactly I don't know if they really meant Flemeth to be Mythal, but like the leafless tree thing on her grimoire was like chef kiss. It looked great. Okay. Anyway, uh, that's probably that's that's gonna be it from. Oh, I, I have one more question. Uh, okay, yeah. Uh, oh, this this thing doesn't work because I have to find a new voting system for the chat. Love that. But um, if Andraste being a lyrium construct ended up being true, would this feel like a satisfying answer to the mystery of Andraste? What, what do you guys think? I know we kind of went off on a tangent there. Melrockin says, Having been a Tolkien fan as a kid, it was the elves all along is entirely fan with me. Paul Baker says, I do feel as though the Elven lore in particular has been at, has been advanced so much compared to other aspects that certain things like the dwarves still feel a little stock token. Uh, yeah, there's there's been a lot. Okay, a lot of people are saying no. It does feel like a cheap answer. <clears throat> All right. We had one yes from Murray and then a couple of maybes. Yeah, I don't want... Uh, Maddie says, I don't want the Andraste question answered. Yeah, I I think... Yeah, I, so I, I, my personal opinion is, like... I I don't think I would hate Lyrium Andraste. But I wouldn't... I, I think I would always be a little bit disappointed if they answered it. I, I think it's best as a question, not an answer. <laughs> that was better than she was with all along with RSC. I mean, that's fair. Okay, so most people hate this. Oh. <laughs> I think it's a really good theory, but yeah, I kind of don't want it to be true. I, although, of all the theories, maybe because this one's just freshest, I don't hate it the least. Like, I'm not a... Well, okay. This one and the Old God Soul. Those are the two that I feel like, if that ended up being true, I'd be like, all right. I, I Whatever. But like, Mythal... Eh. Eh. <laughs> Murray says it's a yes for me as long as some cool titan lord comes with it. I mean, maybe. Do 
Dylan says, I don't want it to be explained in full. A lot of the beauty in religion is the mystery. Yeah. So I, and I think that if they really wanted to, to keep the Chantry interesting, that that's what they would do. Badger Pike says, I don't hate it. I just don't buy it as a place the devs would go. That's a good, that's a good answer, actually. So, yeah. Okay. So, we're, I, I, the consensus I'm getting is cool theory, but we're not feeling it. I, I feel that. I feel that. <clears throat> okay, so that is all I actually have for today. That was my little one-hour presentation. Um, so, we had... Last... Oh, I say last week. It's been... <laughs> it was like two weeks. Three weeks ago? It's been a while. I There has been so much crazy shit going in the background, and then I also got sick. So, I'm really slow on content right now, and I am so sorry about that. Um, and then the holidays are coming up, so it's not going to get better anytime soon, but I'm going to try my best. Um, so we, we've had kind of two different live presentations going on now. You guys really like the Canticle of Exaltations, um, where I, I really just talk more about um, lore, where like very few of what the people have to say. It's just, here is a weird thing that's not really worth a video because it's just lore bait for an hour. <laughs> Uh, this one was more like answering some interesting questions I got on PMs. Um, there's another like a live stream format where I find someone's really big theory and just talk about that for an hour. Um, but I guess I just how how is this going? Like just answering a couple at a time. How how do you guys how how are we feeling about that? Was this just as good as last time? Do you like this better? You like this worse? You like the other format better? How are we feeling? <clears throat> Also, thank you for for thanking me. <clears throat> Format has been great. Wouldn't it be funny for Andrasi to turn out totally different from the Chantry version, just like the Avengers are totally different. Yeah, what if Andrasi was the bad guy? What if she was? Maybe the Avengers were right all along. Have we thought about that? It's all right, Kate. Take care of yourself. Stream form's pretty cool. Okay. Yeah, this is cool. Interaction is fun. That's good. I liked both. Okay. Fun format. <laughs> I think it's fun. One hour live lore chat. This is good, not goo. Hey, maybe I liked goo. <laughs> no, <laughs> it's good. <laughs> this is fun. I enjoy talking about theories more. Okay, okay. Well, I'll I'll keep doing this. Um, I'm gonna try to hunt out a couple of like big PMs I got. I keep saying PM or DM. Does it really matter which one I say? Like I. Who, who gives a fuck? Anyway, um, I'm going to, for the next presentation, I'm going to try to hunt down like a really big theory I can talk about for an hour and see how we feel about that. And then I guess I'll just kind of like these like lore lectures are just kind of kind of go in between like this one, the Exaltations one, and then like where I talk about one big theory. Um, and that's kind of what I'll be doing for a while. I, I think also what would end up happening, real quick, I just want to talk about um, the Game Awards. If the Game Awards did show something Dragon Age, I might move trailer analysis to something like this. Just because I'm kind of getting to the point where I need to be more efficient with my time. And the... <laughs> What was so great about the very first Dragon Age for um, the, the the Dreadwolf Rises trailer is that it it was just like a still image with a lot of like lore bits I can talk about and say distinctly this is what it's supposed to mean or I can call draw back to whatever. But we're kind of getting to the point where it's just going to be a bunch of new shit. I have no idea what's going on, and so I'm just like a video would just be me saying, "Hey, looks 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 really dope. Isn't that cool?" And like I don't want to edit a video. I'd rather just like do it live. <laughs> You know what I mean? And like talk to you guys about it. So I there there there's a good good chance where I might have like trailer reaction videos like in this type of format where we do it live, maybe really soon after it released. I don't know. We'll talk about it when we get there. Anyway, um I don't even know what to say about when my next content thing would be because I am a mess over here. But but guys, thank you so much for coming today. Uh and I'll see you all eventually. Uh, and if you are watching me stream Dragon Age Inquisition, my very last episode of Dragon Age Inquisition is tomorrow at 11 a.m. Central. 
where I finish Trespasser. And it's one of the very last Dragon Age stream I do. Well, I mean, I will probably play Dragon Age in some other format again on stream. But this is my canon recorder, my, my, my canon stream. So please check it out tomorrow. I'm very excited.